The next part of Lecture 11 is an introduction to Lewis structures. In a previous lecture, the idea of Lewis symbols was presented. This is where we take the atomic symbol and place dots near the symbol, which equal the number of valence electrons. So atoms in group A will have one valence electron. Atoms in group B will have two valence electrons, and I'm sure you can recognize the pattern. Atoms in group five will have five valence electrons. When one is building a compound, either ionic or molecular, there's one objective. That's to have an octet of electrons in the outer shell. Octet stands for eight. So for ionic compounds, the metals will lose valence electrons and the nonmetals will gain valence electrons. In doing so, they are isoelectronic with the noble gases. Noble gases have eight electrons around them. And that's where the idea of the octet rule comes from. Another way you can build compounds is by building molecular compounds. These are formed between nonmetals, and each atom reaches an octet by sharing valence electrons. There is one exception to the octet rule. Hydrogen's nearest noble gas is helium, which has two electrons around it. So hydrogen is stable when it has access to a duet of electrons, meaning two. So we'll start with a very simple example. How about a compound between two chlorine atoms? Each chlorine atom has seven valence electrons because they are in group seven. If I wanted to make a compound with two chlorine atoms, I would draw the Lewis structure like this. Notice that this chlorine feels as if it has access to eight electrons. The seven electrons it came in with plus the one it is sharing. And the other chlorine also feels as if it has access to eight electrons, the seven that it came in with and the one it is sharing. So shared electrons are essentially double counted as belonging to either atom on the side of the bond. The shared electrons are called bonding electrons or also a shared pair, which you may see abbreviated SP, the unshared electrons are called non-bonding electrons, also called lone pairs, and you may see these abbreviated with LP. So this would be the Lewis structure. Now it's very common to actually take the two shared electrons and draw them as a line. Each line represents two shared electrons. So this would be the Lewis structure of chlorine. Now, it may seem excessive to put the lone pairs around the chlorine atoms, but as we get further into chemistry, you'll realize that those lone pairs sometimes have jobs. So how do you determine the Lewis structure for molecules? I have a list of instructions here that you may refer to later. For now, here's the quick summary. Your first step is to determine what's called electrons required. This is how many electrons each atom in a molecule needs for an octet, or a duet if hydrogen, if the atoms did not share electrons. So electrons required is equal to the number of hydrogens times two, plus the other atoms times eight. The next step is to determine how many electrons do you actually have to work with. Electrons required is what we need if no sharing occurs. Valence electrons is how many electrons we actually have. So this would be the sum of the group number of each atom minus the charge on the molecule. Next, we would need to determine how many electron pairs must be shared in bonds. These are called shared pairs, and they are one half the value of electrons required minus valence electrons. The electrons not in bonds are the lone pairs, and you can figure that out by 
the valence electrons minus two times the shared pairs multiplied by one half. Then to draw the structure, you write your atoms on the paper, and the first atom of the formula is generally the central atom. Then one starts with bonds. Connect those atoms with the number of shared pairs that have been calculated. Then one fills in electrons around those atoms until everyone except hydrogen has an octet. Hydrogen will be happy with one bond. So if you have atoms other than hydrogen with one bond, you should put three pairs of electrons. Atoms with two bonds need two pairs of electrons. An atom with three bonds needs one pair of electron. You should always double check your work, so look at the molecule and count the number of electrons. That should add up to the number of valence electrons, because that's the number of electrons available in the compound. There will be more detail later on how to get formal charge. So let's start with phosphorus trifluoride. There are four atoms in this molecule. If each one had eight electrons, we would have 32 electrons. That is our electrons required. Valence electrons would be five from phosphorus and seven from each fluorine. This adds up to 26 electrons. The number of shared pairs or bonds, if one takes 32 minus 26, you get six. There are two electrons in each bond, so divide by two, to get three bonds. I like this setup because it sets one up for the lone pair calculation. Lone pairs will be the valence electrons minus the six electrons involved in bonds, so that there will be 20 electrons divided by two in our 10 lone pairs. Phosphorus goes in the middle, fluorine goes around the outside. We have three bonds, so one, two, three. Now it's time to add lone pairs. This fluorine has one bond, so it has access right now to two electrons, but it needs eight. So that means we have to add six more electrons. Notice that if you draw a circle around the fluorine, it has six, seven, eight electrons. And the same is true for the other fluorines. What about the phosphorus? Right now, if we imagine a circle, it has three bonds, so it has six electrons. Two more are needed in order for it to have access to an octet. Now let's double check our structure. I see three bonds. The entire structure has 26 electrons, which is our valence electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. This is how we've used our 26 valence electrons. And 10 of those electrons are in lone pairs. How about an example with hydrogen, like formaldehyde? Electrons required will be the two hydrogens times two plus the two non-hydrogens times eight for 20 electrons. The valence electrons will be four for carbon, one for each hydrogen, and six for oxygen to give us 12 electrons. The difference between 20 and 12 is eight electrons. Dividing that by two, we need four bonds or four shared pairs. If we take 12 minus eight, the four electrons that are left, which are not in bonds, must be in non-bonds, which we call lone pairs. So four divided by two gives us two lone pairs. Naturally, carbon goes in the middle. The other atoms are around the outside. Each atom will get one bond, but we need four bonds. Now hopefully at this point, it doesn't make sense to you to give hydrogen an additional bond. 
hydrogen is happy with a duet of electrons. So that extra bond must go between carbon and oxygen. Now, as far as lone pairs, we don't need any for the hydrogens. Carbon has one, two, three, four bonds, so it has access to eight electrons. Well, it must be the oxygen. The oxygen has two bonds, so so far it has four electrons, and it needs four more to have access to an octet. So once again, we have four bonds as calculated, we had 12 electrons to play with, and that is what is in the molecule. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And we have our two lone pairs. So why do hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen adopt diatomic molecules in their elemental state? They have stable Lewis structures that way. So if we were going to draw hydrogen, I think it would be a little bit of overkill to go through the math, but you would honestly come up with one bond between the hydrogen atoms. If we were to draw oxygen, you would discover that it needs two bonds between each oxygen atom. So we'll have two bonds, and each oxygen has two lone pairs. Notice how each oxygen has access to eight electrons. And if we were to do the calculation for nitrogen, you would discover that it has three bonds, so two nitrogens with three bonds between them, and each nitrogen has a lone pair. So each nitrogen has access to eight electrons, like its nearest noble gas. This is an introduction to Lewis structures. Much more will be coming in later lectures.